Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Dysfunctional Systems Episode 1, Learning to Manage Chaos. Okay, so in the last episode, I finished the game. At least, I finished one playthrough of the game. I was thinking about coming back and seeing if there was another path through the game. A different ending. And it turns out, there is. I looked at the Wikipedia article for the game. I didn't look at it in detail because I didn't want to be spoiled about everything that was going to happen. But it confirmed that there is another ending. Which I believe is decided by this option. It's decided by whether you go along with Cyrus and his plan to kill the president, or you rebel. And that's what I did last, uh, last playthrough. I rebelled. So I'm really curious to see how much it influences the story if you just go along with Cyrus and kill the president. And we were about to find out, so let's do it right now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> let's kill the president. Follow Cyrus. <sighs> Fine. I refuse to invest any more heart into this. It's out of my hands. I'm just here to watch, yeah? Then that's what I'll do. If Cyrus wants to go around murdering people and being a terrible person, then I guess that's his prerogative. I'll just consider this an example of how not to be a proper mediator. This is all we can do, Winter. Yes, whatever. I must say that the thing I hate the most about this is that he isn't entirely wrong. Not about the murdering. That's definitely wrong. No question. It's just that I really don't know anything. Cyrus is a mentor. He's been doing this for a while. Evidently, from the candor, candor in his voice, he's good at it too. Even if I took the lead, in the face of my inexperience, anything I suggest is likely to fail. It's just so... it's so frustrating. Winter? I will follow you, but I hope you know that I won't be killing anyone. This is your bloodstained proposal, not mine. I'll watch and I won't help. That's all you're here for. That's right. I am only here to watch and learn, that's all. As such, I stop talking and just stare at him instead. We need to find a library. Is that so? We need to find out where the president is. We visited this world before, but not this country. We don't know where their government office is, or even if that is where the president will be. We need to learn more, and quickly. This feels like a lecture. Wait here. He turns and runs off to a woman passing by, one of several women, and men, who seem to have begun filling the streets, as the president's address assumably ends. Well, okay. I didn't exactly have the urge to flee just now or anything, although I wouldn't mind going home and ignoring all this. Demanding withdrawal... Demanding a withdrawal is a failure, though, so I will stick with it. Granted, I am sure they would make an exception for a situation as unique as this, but... No. I have to see this through. I ought to see this through. I turn my attention back to my mentor, who has finally reached the woman. Until she notices him, he is wearing an expression so stern I'm sure it would stun her. But after that point, she is met with a bright face and a smile. He begins talking with her amiably outside of my earshot, and I stop paying him any mind. Something about that high charisma of his now disgusts me. Perhaps it's the basely manipulative angle from which he ultimately approaches everything. Ends justifying means. The needs of the many over the few. Various ridiculous philosophies. Even for having to be around him, I feel gross and dirtied. Worse for being associated with him, and especially worse for letting him do what he wants. But, right, of course. I shouldn't let any of it bother me. Just as he said, my job here is to watch. This isn't my responsibility. Distance from him now, I start feeling much calmer than before, and when he returns, I've settled down enough to feel oddly impassive about the whole situation. I just asked for directions. There's a library close by. Come on, we're running. With that, he takes off in a sprint. Clearly slower than his true pace, I would guess, for my benefit. For a second, I contemplate walking. But I reason promptly that there's no point in making matters any worse. I follow, fast enough. 
All right, so I think some of this is going to be the same. Like, this whole situation here of finding where he is is probably going to be the same. Like, I've already read this. I, th I think I've read this. Ever s just in case I haven't, I'll read it, if I don't definitely recognize it. Ever since the we entered here, I've been breathing sighs. Everything makes sense in books. Everything is carefully placed, planned out, logical and clear. They reflect what I once admired in reality. Of course, reality doesn't offer such things anymore. After all, here I am, sitting in the library of another world, my mentor tapping away at keys to find a man to kill. <sighs> I wonder what kind of books a world with wars has. Ones about bloodshed and suffering? As long as they're fiction, I might like to read them. Granted, I've lately found it difficult to determine, determine what exactly fiction even is. Got it. That's... I almost say, that's good. But I catch myself from automatic politeness. Nothing about this is good. I should have sabotaged his computer somehow. Well, I suppose all that's left is to murder a man. I give Cyrus a curious glance to suggest a question, possibly one eliciting the whereabouts of the president. He seems to pick up on it. Don't worry about where he is. It's not like it would mean anything to you. Instead, I've got to tell support. We can't shift on our own to unconfirmed locations. I'll tell you this, though. This society is pretty open. The floor plan of their entire government building is online. Found it on a website offering tours of all places. The president's office is on the top floor. We'll try going directly there. I break my gaze and look at his computer monitor. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Cyrus lifting his wrist to his mouth and talking into it. I could eaves eavesdrop, but I don't really care to, and instead turn to the halls of bookshelves. Hmm. Now here's a thought. If there, are, if there are an infinite number of words, and a supposedly infinite number of worlds, then theoretically there's no limit to what has been written, right? That would mean that each world has their own unique writings, their own unique piece of an infinite collection. How enlightening. We're going, Winter. I wonder how long I can keep up this charade of nonchalance. I'm afraid that as soon as I take it... As soon as I take it down, I'll be completely aware of the severity and sickness of the oncoming event. So I don't want to go. I don't want to see this. I am going to watch a man die. I'm going to let a city be destroyed. I... I can't believe I joked about this. I completely relinquished my rebellion, and now I can't save anything. You could easily say this was my fault. And wouldn't need to convince me. I could have done something. I could have tried harder. If this is a lesson, I want to stop coming to class. I must keep going, though. Regardless of my feelings on the matter. Really, I have to. I have to keep doing this, and I have to keep dealing with him. If I'm going to allow this, then I can't hide from it. I look back to Cyrus. The coordinates have been sent to your ICD. We'll be going together in five. I lift my wrist and turn the small screen towards me. There are coordinates and a countdown showing. Cyrus is taking something from his inventory. Before I even see it, I know what it is. A weapon. He pulls it out, and, I'm at, and I am at a loss for words. I only know that it's a gun from it being vaguely similar to the one in my textbook. It looks much stranger than that textbook gun and seems disturbingly sinister. Perchance, my way of thinking is warping my perceptions? Hopefully not. I wonder how Cyrus got it. We aren't given any weapons for our work, but we're allowed to take things from different worlds along our travels, and store them within our inventories. Surely there's a story in how that gun wound up with him. Surely there's a story in how he got each of the doubtlessly countless weapons he keeps in his inventory. If I didn't loathe him, I might even ask. And here we go. <sighs> How is this going to go down? My surroundings quickly change as the countdown reaches zero. Well, there's the slender, I think, slender woman painting. <laughs> oh, things so creepy. 
I take... Whoa. Whoops. Oh, I accidentally used the scroll wheel. Whoops. My bad. I take stock of the new room. Let me try that again. This time without misspeaking constantly. God, I'm making a lot of mistakes, aren't I? I take stock of the new room, noting that it is practically furnished. Yet elegant, with the same large desk I saw on television sitting meters away from us. The same man is here as well, though this time he's standing back towards us and gazing out a large window. He naturally does not notice our arrival. There isn't anything visually or audibly spectacular about a teleportation from the ICD. Cyrus lifts his arm to aim, and everything crashes onto me. I stare at the trigger intently, and it is as though time has slowed. I can do something. I can stop this. I could just push him. I could swat the thing out of his hand. It doesn't have to go this way. There are other things we could do. He can't be so cold-hearted. No one deserves this. He's going to die. I can't stop this. I can't do anything. I cry out, too late, and soundless under the gun. But he heard me. Barnaby heard me. He turned, and I saw his face as he died. The scariest part is that his face in death was exactly as a normal face. I'll now see it everywhere. He crumples to the floor. Cyrus doesn't scold me for shouting. He just stands still at my side, pointing his gun at the president's corpse. I stare at the body and become aware of my breathing. I take in air and rattle as it fills my lungs. You... This is literally the strangest experience I've had since I got here, and I'm not convinced it's real. I don't want to be convinced. He's... I'm displaced and overwhelmed. I haven't even read novels like this. I can't react to something so... so almost fake. After a few minutes, Cyrus lowers his weapon and returns it to his inventory. My neck cricks as I turn to witness the action, seemingly abrupt in the stillness of death. He lifts his wrist and, look at, and looks at it. We are then returned to the street where we started, some distance from the televisions. Okay, so yeah, if you go along with this plan, he does actually kill the president. Question is, what's going to happen now? Is the bomb still going to go off? At the, at the new location, I break from my stupor and attempt to ground myself again. I assure my mind that this is all real, and knowing that it is, I soon look upon Cyrus with contempt. Wasn't that it? What are we doing still here? Guilty and need another drink, perhaps? We need to monitor the situation. There may be more to do yet. In his case, doesn't that mean more people to kill? Whatever. I've done what I have to. Can I leave now? Frankly, I don't even care about my grade after this. Look. What? I turn to what Cyrus is directing my attention to. The wall of TVs from before. There is a small crowd gathered there, and over their heads I can see the instantly recognizable crest of the Brighton Presidency displayed on the screens. Without a word, Cyrus moves to join them. I reluctantly follow, uncertain whether I'm going to like what I'm about to hear. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Please, play please pay close attention to the following message. The message will begin in 10 seconds. Then they've... I stopped myself from using found out, or alternatively, caught you, realizing our company. Cyrus merely looks down at me for three seconds before gazing back to the symbol. If the president is dead, then who's going to speak? His second or something? The message will now play. Oh, what? Sir, isn't that... Shh. It's the president. Dressed in his same brown suit, behind his same large desk in the same exact room that I just saw him die in. 
I thought this place wasn't magical. Isn't this necromancy? Cyrus's expression reveals little to the mystery as usual, but I can see for certain that he is in no way nervous about this. Right. It can't be necromancy. Rigid physics, Winter. Think with some sense. Cyrus probably killed a body double or something. Is body double the right term? He killed somebody acting as somebody else. At least I seriously hope so, because the last thing I need after all of this is wizards. People of Brighton. Do not be alarmed, for the news that I bear is by no means alarming. This tape is to be played at the time of my death. To be more exact, the time of my assassination. Ah, pre-recorded, okay. The crowd gasps and murmurs, despite the president's cryptic assurance. Ah, right, of course. This must, this must have been what Cyrus expected. The people shall now have a martyr. Vice President Haynes shall carry on my duties, few as they were, from here on. He will also make certain my final order is brought to fruition. My body tenses at his words. As I said, this is not alarming news. After my actions today, I fully expected Gabriel's retaliation. I know what he means, and it's crawling forth in my head. The realization. The realization that I, in my inaction, advocated this. Of course, uh, of course, I hoped that I would be wrong. The second possibility, the likely one. The bomb will be launched and people will die. But the Gabrian elite seem set to dismiss us. While unfortunate, it is their choice. Gabria, Gabria did this? I knew things were bad, but never thought they'd start outright killing us. It seems they're reacting with some unexpected behavior, but none of them are calling for the death of Gabrians. It is not with pleasure that I issue the order for their death. An eye for an eye is a bitter philosophy. I wish there could have been another way. The missile has already been launched. Oh shit, so it happens anyway. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Wait, hey, are we seriously going to fight Gabriel? Is Was Barnaby crazy? Just because we got a military doesn't mean we can fight anyone. We don't stand a chance. We're gonna get slaughtered. Haven't you been keeping up with the word on the street? That bomb is supposed to take out Gabrere, the whole damn city, with one bomb. They're the ones who are gonna get slaughtered. Good goddamn riddance, as far as I'm concerned. Barnaby nailed it. Gabria should pay. Had their chance, and they pissed it down the gutter. Ah. Hey fellas, we've been dying here for over a hundred years, and for what? So the Gabrians could sit on their lazy asses all day and watch us bleed? I say, let them learn something about what it's like to suffer and die. I plug my ears, but their voices pierce me. Yeah, we can do this. Barnaby fought and died for us. He's... He's always been fighting for us. We shouldn't let his death be in vain. Man, when I first heard his speech, I thought he was nuts. But maybe the old bastard was right all along. Maybe this is how we should fight back. Kill the fuckers. Let's show them what we're made of. What am I hearing? I do hope, severely, that we will be able to negotiate after this. Fuck negotiating. Shut up, we can't fight them. Are you insane? We're not gonna fight him, we're gonna fucking kill him. People of Brighton, I am sorry that there is no path for us other than that stained with blood. Do not forgive me for my decision. I only pray that tomorrow will be a better day for you, and that my choice was the proper one. Good night, Brightons. It has been an honor serving as your president, as little as it ever meant. The crowd erupts in a commotion, screams of praise, shouts of anger, but one overwhelming cry. Give them hell. I don't know what it means, but it sickens me. I immediately face Cyrus with intent to spit on his shoes and slap him across the face. If only I could reach. But he drags me away from the crowd before, I'm, uh, before I am capable of either. Sir. You've won, sir. You have your unity in blood. Where's your smile? Why aren't you happy? It's gone precisely as planned. Are you not getting this? You just killed at least an entire city of people. And why? 
Why, I ask? Because you refused to listen to me. Because you were so stubborn and... Because I couldn't stop you, miserable, shrewish, murderous oaf. I can't believe this. How could I have let this happen? This weight isn't something someone like me should bear. I can't bear this enormous load of bullshit. This guilt at my incapability. This fury at your foolishness. This disgust in myself for my apathy. Why won't you say anything? Look over there. The whole congregation looks to the horizon, where there is a growing light. Anger subsides into shock, which subsides into disbelief, and then acceptance. What comes with acceptance is a sadness so sudden, thick and powerful that tears fall from my eyes before I even realize they're coming. Millions of people are now gone, in a moment, just gone, burnt up. I am to blame. I failed. Absolutely and 100%. I allow this ruination. Sir, you... I just can't believe you. I just can't accept this. Why did you kill them? An immense wave of sound and energy pounds through us, and I nearly topple over, held still only by tugging at Cyrus's shirt. Shit. Shit. Shit, well, shit, Cyrus, really? That's all you've got to say after all this? Shit of all things? Let me tell you what you should be saying right now, you murderer. You, you fucked everything. Settle down, we don't have time for that. He nods into the light. That right there is a classic sign of a true fusion bomb, and that shockwave just now tells us it's too strong for its own good. Brighton couldn't test a nuclear weapon under Gabriel's surveillance, and it shows right there. They used too much reactant, and it's becoming self-sustaining. What? What in the world does that mean? It means this whole world is dead. That reaction is going to continue until it's consumed the entire atmosphere and left this planet a barren rock. The whole world? What? He turns from me. We need an out. Prioritize the student. The situation is hopeless. Wait. No, wait. Hold on a second. This is impossible. What is he saying? It's gotten even worse? Ridiculous. It can't be. No, 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 no. How could this even... Don't tell me after all that's happened, this is how it ends? Don't tell me that... The light was actually bright enough to dry my eyes. For a second, I'm pretty sure I've died. So sure, in fact, that my concern, my concerns for Brighton's world are briefly overtaken by personal ones. But then I realized if I were dead, I couldn't think. I look to my right and see Cyrus there, confirming the theory. We've returned home with one less world to worry about. High radiation levels detected. Please remain calm and wait for emergency medical personnel to assist you. High radiation levels? Is talking about us? Sir, what's going on? The events of the past four hours have totally beat me over the head, and I'm still reeling from the blows. Right now, I don't know if I should despair over the losses or fear something else. Really? I'm finding it difficult to think. I've not just woken up from some over-imaginative nightmare. We picked up some radiation from the blast, it seems. Uh, we'll be fine though, right? Yeah. A disconcerting pause. After a few moments, the entrance to the room room opens with a loud clunk, and some people in hazard suits enter, pushing a trolley along with them. Sir? It's just a precaution. Relax. Relax? I need you both to lie on your backs for us. Cyrus calmly does so, but I do not. I'm going to be okay, right? You'll be fine if you lie on your back. And if I don't, I feel fine. 
While you should, it takes a while for the symptoms of radiation sickness to set in. Mercy, I'm nervous. Everything was confusing before, but I can easily process a threat to my own life. How long? Well, it depends. The longer the better. Now could you please... And what happens if they come on fast? Should I be worried? Hey, if you just... Oh crap, I'm freaking out. During said freakout, I notice that she is motioning for another person in a suit to come over. We're going to give you something to calm you down. Hold it. I don't want to be calm. This is the perfectly appropriate way to react. If you let us work on you, you won't have any reason to freak out. We'll make sure you get over this. Now lie down so we can. I do so grudgingly, still absolutely worried about everything. The paramedic leans over me and, from what I can tell, prepares to insert an IV. It enters with little pain, only a prick, but it's enough to make my eyes water. After they start, they don't stop. I cover my face with my free arm. I'm going to die, aren't I? No, you're not. Look, are you positive you don't want to take something to calm down? It's difficult to talk while I'm choked, sobbing every half second. I'm sure. I'm just so scared. I, I hate this. Alright, I'm going to explain what we're doing a bit. We're giving you a drug that will quickly clear out the radiation in your body and prevent the delayed effects of poisoning. I should say, even though it does that, you're still going to feel you're still going to feel the early symptoms of radiation sickness. But that's it. It'll only be sickness and you won't die from it. You're just going to feel really, really gross. We can put you to sleep until the symptoms pass, if you'd like. No. What if whatever's coming, I deserve it. I don't care if I suffer. Just please don't let me I don't want I don't want to die. You're not going to die. It's our job to keep that from happening, and we're pretty good at it. If you need any further reassurance... Hey, you're not throwing up, right? No spontaneous bowel movements either? At least, not yet. I'm gonna do what? Oh, man. Just remember that it's going to suck, but you're going to live. Your body lost a lot of cells in that blast, and it's going to be bad until it regenerated. I want, I want to go to my room. Sorry, but you'll have to stay here until your radioactivity has lowered to an acceptable level. I'll take you over to your room once that's over with. So I lie on the floor, quickly sobbing to myself, quietly sobbing to myself, as I'm medicated through gravity. I'm terrified, and I feel terrible. And I only feel more terrible that I'm not feeling quite terrible enough. I'm the worst. I mean, what are these tears even for? I'm not going to die. Someone already died. A whole planet of someones. Don't they deserve my tears? I guess now that I'm home, it's just so easy to distance myself from it. Almost like it never happened at all. I know that's not true, but... Well... It's all Cyrus's fault anyway. Even if I fought him tooth and nail, he's my superior and doing that would be... <sighs> I don't even want to imagine his face. I make a sincere effort not to look in his direction, even with him lying right beside me. I gaze instead at the black ceiling, trying my best to feel as empty and nondescript as it is. Alright, that should do it. The words break me from my self-induced trance. The person in the hazmat suit has since removed it, and when I turn I am glad to find a bare hand and smiling face offered to me. Let's be off to your room, then. Okay. Thank you. She helps me to my feet, which I find are currently very unsupportive. I feel significantly weaker than average, which is saying a lot, since I am constantly aware of my natural physical weakness. I sway slightly, but I don't know if that is due to the radiation or just my nerves being completely shot. As the paramedic leads me from the room, I don't bother checking back to see if Cyrus is still there. When we arrive, my roommate is standing against her bed, reading. Okay, hold on just while I take a drink. I am curious how similar this is going to be. 
So major difference. Major difference in what happened. And this time Cyrus didn't take any glass to the to the body, so he's not as heavily injured. He just has radiation sickness, just like me. So I wonder how things are going to play out. She's still filled with regret. But this time it's just kind of for a different reason. Hmm. Alright, so this is, yeah, this is probably going to be the same. So I might skip through this. Yeah, this, yeah, this is all the same so far. Yep, yep, yep. And she goes to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's really disturbing? Is that... I bet it's really easy to make the sound of throwing up. Like, just think about it. You could take something like soup. Take soup and pour it into a bowl or something like that and record it. And you probably have the sound of throwing up right there. That makes me want to never have soup again. Ugh. You know, nice chunky soup. Big bits of, I don't know, potato or something. Yeah. Ugh. Alright, so yeah, this is all the same so far. Ugh. Just giving her directions on what to do, take care of her, etc., etc. The air was completely burned away. Yep, this is all the same so far. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so far it's all the same. Yep, same, same. This, well, this... This might be slightly different, actually, but it's basically the same. Yeah, this is the same. She goes to bed. Yep. You look green. Hey, I'm going to help you up. You shouldn't be in the bathroom all day. It's bad being in there. I showered. Yeah, I know. She bends down and takes me by the arm, lifting me with relative ease. I can't remember if this happened exactly before. I feel like this is a little bit different, but maybe my memory is just really bad. Well, actually, scratch that. I know my memory is very bad, but maybe I'm remembering this wrong. But seriously. Yeah, I understand. I think I'm done anyway. Can you bring me over to my bed? Well, I didn't pick you up to bring you to mine. <laughs> that combined with the expression on her face is just priceless. Come on. I don't want to drag you. It doesn't matter what she wants. I like the strength to move. She drags me regardless. Alright, yeah, this is all the same so far. She tips her head and looks at me. Yes. Can you talk much? Okay, this happened. Yeah, this happened too. I think. She looks at me as she wants to say something, but doesn't. And then they go to bed. She pushes, pushes from my bed and moves to hers. Yep. Did you actually almost die? I did. The assuredness with which I speak my words somehow shakes me. I feel fear again for a moment, but it quickly passes. I'm alive and safe. It's okay. Waverly doesn't say anything, and I can't turn to see her. I didn't die, though, and my mentor didn't either. <sighs> my eyes hurt. My head hurts. Waverly, can you turn off your lamp? I'm sorry. After saying this, I fall silent. I hear soft footsteps, and in seconds, it's dark. 
It's almost a comfort, this void. But nothing right now could make me feel better. I apologize to Waverly again. She still says nothing, but I can tell that she has an answer. I don't know what the answer is, but it seems hard to say. That's fine, though. My, eyeli my eyelids are heavy and my skull is throbbing. I feel like I'm going to drown in sleep soon. That sleep you get from medication. Thick and unnatural sleep. I don't, though. I just feel weighted and queasy. I stare at nothing and listen to the settling of the dorms. I can hear people walking through the stone halls, although it's late. Wind is swirling above the mountains. There's music coming from elsewhere. Light and haunting. Slipping away from my consciousness, I begin to close my eyes. We never paid for our drinks. <laughs> she just realized that right now. I just realized that right now. They, they never paid for their drinks. Not that it matters. Alright, so now it's playing this little teaser trailer again, which is where I thought it ended. I thought this was the end last time, but it continued on for like 20 to 30 minutes afterwards. So, let's see if it does it again. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna watch this again because it's so amazing looking! Look how good it is! I still can't believe how high quality and how polished everything is in this game. Just look at that! That's awesome! Okay, let's see if it continues. It probably will. Yep, here we go. This is so bleeding awkward. I know that taking care of Winter is my responsibility, but, well, I can't. It's past 12 o'clock and I still haven't gotten brazen enough to wake her. Okay, yeah, so this I've already done. Yeah, she tries to wake her. Yeah. This is all the same or very, very similar. I actually don't remember this part. Uh, first of all, I don't even know her that well. We've only been living together for a few weeks. Hmm. Sure, we've been friendly, but, you know, I wouldn't say we're friends yet. Still, as a roommate, I feel like I should at least try to make her feel better. I think this is new. Man, maybe that would make me... Uh, that would just make me seem like an asshole. Like, oh, don't sweat the small stuff, Winter. It's just one world lost, and there's plenty of those. It's a fantastic situation we have here. In room whatever number it is. I'm totally not equipped to understand how she's feeling, and I'm not qualified to pester her. I'm not even... I'm not uh, able to even get what happened to her. How does all of the world's air just burn away? With a demon summoning and a crazy undone seal? Curses and abominations from distant space? <laughs> That'd be worth seeing. Hmm? Someone at the door? Oh god, is that her again? Maybe this will force me into, ac into action. I walk over, prepared to answer. It's the northerner. Pretty as usual, and handsome all the same. Crossing his arms and putting on a serious face, he addresses me. Waverly, yo! Okay, this is very different from what happened before. Maybe Ayo or Ayo or however, however you pronounce his name will not be as obnoxious as Irie or whatever her name was. I mirror his pose. Ayo, yo! <laughs> Heard... Bew? Bew's on the mend? Came to give her a hug. That's great, but I'm not letting you in. He stutters, 
in puffy disbelief, as if what I just said was the most preposterous thing. Hmm? Why not? I think you might want that hug more than her. R ridiculous! He draws out a slow, fake punch. <laughs> I must make it past you. Therefore, I challenge you to a duel, Waverly, and the reward will be a 10-second hug for Bew. I bring up my own arm in the same mock attack. Oh, getting it from her, or giving it to her? Oh, I'd give it to her. But I'd eat longer than 10 seconds. <laughs> Extending a finger from my fist, I point at him. No. Stop right there. His lips tremble for a few seconds, but he prevents a smile. Winner hugs Bew, agreed. Fine, but you will lose this game. Okay, hold on, time out for a second. So if you choose this alternative path, you do get another weird character at the end. But it's a different one. However, it's still just as bizarre as the last one. That's very, very strange. It seems like they were very committed to having a bizarre character with strangely comedic tones appear at the end of the game when the game is being very serious in general. That's really bizarre. He rolls up his sleeve and offers me his hand. Thumb war. Let us dance the dance of combat. Like, I mean, again, stepping back. A world was just wiped out. A world was just destroyed. And now we're having a thumb war. What the fuck? I, I can't state it any other way. That is my that is my professional criticism of this moment. What the fuck? A world was just destroyed and we're having a thumb war. I... Uh, it... J no. It doesn't work. Tonally, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. It, It's so bizarre, it's actually kind of funny. Like, I'm not angry at it or something like that. I just think it's really bizarre. A world was just destroyed and they're having a thumb war. What? Uh, okay. Linking hands, we both raise our thumbs and stare intently at the battle zone. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. We pass our thumbs over one another as we speak the rhyme, and when we finish, we clash. We struggle for a few seconds before Io speaks. This is so dumb. I think it was a good way of getting the point across. A weird otherworldly kids game where two opposing forces battle to the death. A great metaphor for the philosophy of some systems. Sure, sure, but something's wrong here. If I had this much fun fighting in a war, I'd be worried about myself. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say the stakes are quite as high here. Do you think they'll give us more rhymes for other concepts? If you see a loaded gun, you had better fucking run. Wait, hold on, what's going on here? Do you think they will give us more rhymes for other concepts? Who, who's they? Who's the they here? More rhymes for other concepts. I have no idea what that's referring to. Hmm. But, um, yeah, there, there's a rhyme. If you see a loaded gun, you'd better fucking run. People, people, people hate. It's what they call discriminate. <laughs> what? Once again, I've entered into a bizarro zone. Some alternative dimension where nothing makes any sense. He laughs, and our thumb game continues. Playfully, neither of us try very hard. Uh, neither of us tries very hard. So, you heard about Winter? Yeah, me and the other idiots who accepted the title of Promising were called to an emergency meeting last night. It was like at two in the morning. He looks up at me. Cyrus showed up. I also look up. Really? So, what happened? You don't know? I look back at our thumbs. I only sort of know. Cyrus killed a country's leader, and that leader ordered something called a nuke to be launched at another country after his death. 
The thing could basically wipe out a city. I whistle. Ah, and nuke, you see, is short for nuclear weapon. He says this quite haughtily. Oh my, the education you folks receive dazzles me. Please do try to keep your language simple, so that I may understand. I can feel him smile at this, and he replies jokingly. Sorry, sorry, I'll try. So, how'd this thing that could wipe out a city wipe out a whole planet's population? Well, you see, there's actually only one special type strong enough to do that. I'll admit, I didn't even know about it. The true fusion bomb. A bomb that makes stars when it blows up. I think. I don't know, I'm kind of talking out of my ass. Basically, star on planet equals bad. It killed everyone. Huh. What did Cyrus have to say about all this? Nothing. You just stood there while the other mediators explained the situation and told us we should be paragons for our peers. Like we're supposed to be mature about it and not joke about it. Which is pretty damn presumptuous if you ask me. No one's going to be a dick about it. Hmm. I guess some kids aren't going to understand how serious this is, though. A world just committing suicide with a weapon we've never even heard of is almost comically insane. If you told me about it before the teachers did, I'd call bullshit. Hmm. Anyway, let's finish this. I'm getting tired of holding you. Ah, uh, really? I can't hold your hand anymore? Maneuvering my thumb with what I'd call some real impressive dexterity, I put him down I pin him down for the count. No. After a few seconds, we disengage. Ah, damn it. He scowls and lightly massages his thumb. Welp, it's your win. But I've won the warmth of your hand in the palm of my own. Oh, fairest Waverly, I will cherish it forever. Shut up. Has Bue been asleep this whole time? How long she been out? Out like a light for something like 14 hours. He whistles along. Well, I suppose not all humans are as durable as me. Yes, we are not all northern strong. He beams and points at me with both hands. Yes, you said it. Closing his eyes, he puffs out his chest and puts his hands on his hips. We're born and bred badasses, made tough by tundra and snowdrift. Don't you forget it. Never, comrade. But, yeah. I can't let you in to hug her. Not with those powerful arms. Okay, hold on. Before I continue, I'll be right back. Alright, let's continue. Standing at ease, he answers me smoothly. I'd be soft about it, ma'am. I'd make sure she got more out of it than me. Hey, watch yourself. He smiles. Touchy lass. Hey, it's fine if I can't. I love Bew dearly, and I'd love to comfort her, but I understand if the little tyke needs some rest after all that went down. Yeah, she probably does. There, there's that word again. Waverly. Don't tell me you haven't even checked on her. By the way, from what I read, apparently this is a made-up uh, curse word. So yeah, it's not... It's not... It's not some word that I just didn't recognize because it's... You know, I've just never seen it before. Well, I mean, I guess I haven't seen it before, but you know what I mean. It's not its not really a word. It's made up just for this game. It basically just means fuck. So it's like, fuck, Waverly. Don't tell me you haven't even checked on her. That's basically what it means. I turn my eyes away. Well, what does he expect? Am I meant to just shake her awake and ask, how are you feeling? Didn't even make sure she doesn't have a fever? Waverly. Oh, right. Not a bad idea, that. I will throw you out of here if you won't be responsible enough to take care of her. You make it sound so easy. We barely know one another. And then get to it, and it will be easy. <sighs> I kind of despise this guy for his over-positive attitude. Easier said than done means nothing to him. Are you going to leave, or do I have to shut this thing in your face? Ayo quickly shakes his head and holds up his hands. Whoa, girl, this face is priceless. Don't damage it. You say things like that, and I, and I only want to do it more. 
He plays it flinching and backs away. I'm out, I'm out. Just say hello to Bew for me and tell her that I hope she feels better soon. Fine, girly. He sucks his teeth and cuts his eyes at me, pouting afterward. Later, Waverly. Later. As he walks off, I move to close the door. Before I'm able to, though, Io calls for me again. Are you going to use that hug you won? Of course not. <laughs> Laughing, he turns down another hallway. I was wondering about that. After all, she did win the hug, right? I close the door and rest my back against it. Lastly, I sigh. Io's right. I should at least check if she has a fever. Hmm. Can't tell if she's in comfort or not. Comfort or not, but she's very asleep, judging by the dark stain on her pillowcase. Alright, it would be embarrassing for her to wake up with me standing here, so I'll just touch her forehead softly and quickly. No fever, I think. I brush away some of her hair. She was sweating quite a bit, looks like, although now she's almost a little cold. Well, I'd better wake her up now. I lightly poke her cheek, which garners no response. You'll make this hard for me, huh? You cute little thing. Fine. I slightly pinch her cheek, and when she doesn't budge, I start to tug. Once I do that, she twitches. I understand, and I understand it as a signal to retreat from her bedside. Moving swiftly, I return to my desk and pick up my book, so that I can pretend I was reading. I mean, I was reading around 20 minutes ago, but... Ah, she's gotten up. What time's it? Well, look who's decided to wake up. Late. You've been sleeping since 10 last night. Whoa, I actually feel like I've been sleep... I, I don't even know how to pronounce... What is that? Sleeping in the... Uh, Winter, are you alright? Her sentence transforms into a mumbled mess, and she begins to nod. Come on, Winter. You were doing, you were doing so well. You still need to eat breakfast. Or, well... Lunch at this point, my bad. Breakfast. She drops back down to her bed, and I can feel her gaze at my back. Sorry, I slept past. I slept past it, didn't I? Oh man, don't apologize to me. I could have easily woken you up. Well, yeah, it's lunch now. Which is what I meant to say. Anyway, when do you want to go eat? Right now? I'll help. Oh, I'm honestly too bleh feeling to actually get up, let alone stand up or walk or eat. I see. How are you, Waverly? Fine. You? Ugh, Waverly. Please pay attention. Well, your mind seems alright. Oh, trust me, it's not. I feel so slow. But you practically quipped just now. Good stuff. <sighs> I hear her turn over. Don't tell me you're just going to go back to sleep. No. Then what are you doing getting comfy? Am I not allowed to... Am I not allowed comfort in my own room? You're going to fall asleep. No, I won't. <laughs> mm-hmm. That response was measure slower. I don't think you're telling the truth. I won't, Waverly. Oh, maybe I should read you some lines out of this book. That'd keep your attention. Waverly, please. Don't. I turn to an old page. <clears throat> Eleanor pressed her silver-tipped finger against his skin and hissed a single question. Winter groans loudly and mumbles something I can't hear. Did you see Asta walking along the par... Fuck, I forgot. Ah, I can't remember how to pronounce that. Is it just parapet? Parapet sounds dumb, but maybe that's how it's pronounced. I can't remember. Anyway, or didn't you? Martin's breath was still and he turned his eyes from hers. 
Thoughts of his demon lover were still fresh in his mind. Asta's breath, Asta's taste, Asta's touch. Ah, her touch. Whether his heart had been courted or commanded, it mattered not. He felt for Asta. Enough that he could never betray her. I hear winter turn over again. Spare me. He's about to sleep with Eleanor, Eleanor though, despite all this crap about Asta. Don't you know how that plays out? No. She coughs. No, please stop. Why are you even reading that tripe? You read inward fantasy fiction and you belittle my taste? I like reading inward fantasy because it's fun, so... <laughs> These books are fun too, but fun because they're terrible. You see, Winter? I enjoy these works because I can appreciate their silliness. I don't think they're actually good. Then you think they're awful and rebel in that? Yep. Authors from our world are all very good at what they do, naturally. So it's nice to read some trashy nonsense for a change. You're making fun of other worlds. Yeah. Who cares? I don't know. That's for... Ah, I might be handling this with the sensitivity of a jackhammer. Uh, not that I... Uh... Oh, man, what am I supposed to say? Not that I meant to imply... Waverly, it's fine. I don't mean to sound like that bothers me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Winter. Winter Harrison's place? Oh, come on. You're kidding. We'll pick this up in a bit. I rise from my seat. Coming! I walk over to the door, hoping that this will be over with quickly so that I can return and clear the air. Opening it, I'm a bit taken aback to find a teacher and my first mentor. Okay, so this is, yeah, she met these people... Last time as well. We'll see if it plays out the same way, though. Come to think of it, obviously, if they're looking like perfect, fashionable gentlemen. Yep, this is the same. Let's see. It's all the same. Yep, yep, yep. Protégé, yep. It's all the same so far. Yeah, so far this is the same. That poor girl witnessed the end of the world. Yep. And what's worse, she witnessed Cyrus mediating. I think that might be new. Walter. It sounds like he was 200% Cyrus. Yesterday, out and out stupid. Walter smiles toothily and looks me in the eye, which is weird. But Walter behavior... It's hard not to laugh at his flippant, foolish actions. I only don't because, unlike him, I am solemn about these matters. But Cyrus? He has truly exceeded the limits of being an ass. He is, in fact, such a large ass that he puts the Centerlands to shame. And, uh, what's this? Walter and Henry look to the right, my right, and I peek past the doorframe to see what's drawn their attention. Speak of the devil and he doth speak of the devil and he doth appear. Mr. Cyrus Addington. Okay, this is new. Walter speaks like he's presenting a circus act, complete with showy hand motions and everything. He's right. There's Cyrus, looking a little paler than normal. Liberens, I see that you're still attached to Penn's hip. That's a nice joke, Cyrus. You've always been good at jokes. Though I suppose that's no surprise, seeing as you're a pretty grand joke all your own. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Walter sneering. I haven't had the opportunity to ask. Are you properly ashamed of yourself, or am I, am I to take your overbearing silence recently to be your standard brooding and angst? I'm not here to mince words with you, Walter. Mr. Penn, are you finished here? If so, then I ask that you leave while I speak with my protege. 
Henry, who hadn't bothered to say anything between these two, speaks up. As a matter of fact, my business is done. I should let you know, though, Cyrus, that your protege is still infirm. He nods politely at me, indicating to Cyrus my presence. We were instead speaking to the young mistress... Uh, Ire? Iri? I, I don't know how you pronounce that. She will do. Eh. In that case, Waverly, we will be departing now. Henry puts his hand on my shoulder and bends to whisper in my ear. You know where to find me if you need me, I hope. I understand if recent events have been difficult for you to comprehend. I nod, giving my shoulder a rub as he lets me go and stands up straight. All right. Walter, quit, quit sticking your tongue out at him. You're being childish. Come now, we're leaving. Right, right. Goodbye, Waverly. Yes, goodbye, Waverly. Henry and Walter walk towards Cyrus, and while the elder mediator continues past him, the younger stops at Cyrus' side. I strain my ears to listen. I really am fucking disappointed in you. I don't know what you're thinking, but you need to take this job seriously. You asked to be a mentor. Now start acting like one. You're not working alone anymore. After this, Cyrus answers. But I can't hear what he says. Walter grabs him by the shoulder and snarls, whispering something else. Cyrus refuses to look at him, and Walter scoffs, shoving Cyrus out of his way and catching up with Henry. Leaving Cyrus to just stand there with his head down. Man, they're so weird. Adults are so weird. After a few moments of nothing, he walks over to the door, his gaze still fixed to the ground. Hello, Waverly. Hey. You awkward, creepy bastard. I, uh, I'm not... He finally looks me in the eyes. I'm not entirely sure what to say. You and me both. I just know that I haven't properly apologized. Not that this is properly apologizing, having a student relay the message for me. It's immature, but... I imagine I can't talk to Winter herself right now. I say nothing, because there's nothing polite to say. I want you to tell Winter that I'm sorry. I want you to tell her that absolutely nothing has happened, uh, nothing that happened, was her fault. I suppose that's all I want to say that can pass through you. The blame is wholly mine, and I want her to know that. She did nothing wrong. I can see that he wants to explain himself more, but it's hurting him to try. I'd uh, better speak up. Sir, I'll tell her. Can I ask you something, sir? I heard you killed a leader, and that something bad happened because of that. Wasn't that a, well, a dumb idea? Did you think that wouldn't happen? Cyrus doesn't answer for long enough that I think he's not going to answer. But he speaks before I can say, never mind. I... Listen. This is something difficult for students such as yourself to understand, but... I knew full well it would happen. What? Listen. Why on earth should I? It's something that you eventually must understand. The situation was a quagmire. Many of the options available to us could have very likely made things turn out worse rather than better. You'll have to believe me that, in this case, the best course of action to promote order was to allow that something bad to happen. I'll have to hear what Winter says, because that sounds like nonsense. The larger issue was that I underestimated the consequences. To put it bluntly, I did not properly research. I was overconfident. Sewell, that is, the system we had visited, was a very chaotic world, although inconsistently. 
Scientific discovery happened both quickly and suddenly there. Large leaps in technological prowess were spurred by random discovery. It was a very unusual system. And I knew that. But I didn't give it proper consideration. I had expected some losses for my actions, but certainly not the loss of an entire world. In short, I misjudged and rushed things. You know how I rush things. Don't smile at me, you fiend. You can't just tell me how you allowed a world to die and expect me to smile back. Yeah, I know you're calling on those rumors about yourself being a grimly logical, murder-happy bastard. But it's not really funny knowing that's true and what it entails. Well, unless you have any more questions... What did Walter mean when he said you asked to be a mentor? What am I doing? Waverly, you get... Where do you get off talking like a pal with a superior and asking such personal questions? You weren't even supposed to hear that. Heavens, are you a buffoon? Far more than he knew when he said it. However, I don't think that's a matter to discuss with you kids. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. Is that all? Uh, yeah. Then, thank you for listening to me, Waverly. Again. I'm sorry to put this responsibility onto you, but I would really appreciate it, appreciate it if you could do this for me. I will, I will. Don't worry. He chuckles. You certainly opened up a lot more, Waverly. This... And this is making it seem like I made a fine decision to become a mentor. I get to watch you guys grow up. I may have forgotten what it means to grow up. By the way, you shouldn't eavesdrop. Considering it, I decide to smile. Don't talk about private matters in public then, sir. <laughs> I'll try not to. Then, I'll be weaving. <laughs> wow. I was about to say, I'll be weaving. I'll be weaving, Waverly. Oh my god, what is happening to me? Talk properly. Come on, throat. Come on. Vocal cords. Make the right sounds. Let me try that again. Then, I'll be leaving, Waverly. Peace to you. Aye, and to you. He nods to me and walks away. I shut the door. I'm not sure what my opinion of, of Cyrus is now. Maybe it's worse? I shudder to think it's any better, but, well, I guess he... This isn't something I can work out right now. Yo, Winter. What? You're very popular today. We've had a total of three visitors come for you. Or was it technically four? Ah, whatever. What can I say? I'm very charming. Well, Mistress Charming, I have a letter for you. I walk over to her bedside to hand over the thing. Before I do, though, I decide I should have a look at what the envelope says. For whenever it's too much to bear, read this. Henry Penn. Hmm. Well, here you are. I toss it down next to her pillow, where she reads it sideways. From Mr. Penn... Hmm. Yep, and uh, also, I'm sorry about kind of talking dismissively about worlds. I told you that I didn't really mind. I'm, I'm still sorry. I don't really... I shouldn't have been talking that way anyway. You really don't need to apologize, Waverly. Cyrus is also sorry. Winter falls silent. Hey, come on, just... Listen to what he had to say. I'm listening. He's sorry, and he wants you to know that it's not your fault. It's his. He doesn't want you to blame yourself. He knows he fucked up, Winter. Even if he's a jerk, you should forgive him. 
for yourself. It's not that simple, Waverly. You didn't hear him yesterday. He, he most certainly does not feel bad about what he did. He just may feel bad about letting me see it. I mean, even if I wasn't concerned with his motivations, he still treated me awfully and made me watch him kill a person. Furthermore, even if he had succeeded, millions still would have died. Pardon my language, but screw Cyrus Addington. A dark feeling grows in my belly. I push it down. Nothing good comes from harboring bad will. I can't pretend I know what that's like, Winter. But I know that just feeling shit about things isn't going to help you. I swallow. And I hate to say it, but you're probably going to see a lot more of people killing of killing people in this line of work. We also both know that we may end up killing a few or several ourselves, but nobody wants to acknowledge that. I let out a sigh. This is depressing talk. It's best if we move on. Well, whatever then, whatever. I think we've delayed you eating for long enough. Any longer and you could end up missing your debriefing. Shoot, you're right. That's today. I completely forgot about it. Yeah, so come on. I reach down, and she lifts herself up to receive me. She holds onto my arms with a trembling lack of strength. All right, that's it. I ease her out of bed as carefully as I can, and she's soon on her feet. Able to stand all right? Able to stand, not quite all right. Well, that's clear from how she's swaying a little. Don't try to do this on your own then, Winter. You've got my shoulder right here. Yes. Thank you. She presses all of her negligible weight into me, and I stand firm. We walk to the door, prepared to leave. Prepared to go on, I should think. And I think that's the true end, right? That's basically where the last one ended when you leave the room. Yep. Okay, so, um, yeah, that was the other... The other ending. I'm pretty sure there's only two endings to the game. I think. Um, I'll, I'll check the Wikipedia article and read it in depth to make sure I didn't miss anything. But the other one was the Fuck Cyrus route. Or path, as I called it. Because that's the one where I said, Fuck you, Cyrus, I'm not gonna go along with your plan. So this one is the... Uh, what should I call it? Um... Uh, I, why, why am I making this hard? This shouldn't be hard. It doesn't even matter what I call it, really. Go, go along with Cyrus. Okay, it doesn't even fit. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Whatever. I'm so good at coming up with names, aren't I? <laughs> Okay. Well, I believe that was the um, the only other ending to the game. I think there's two endings. I'm glad I went back to check it out, though. I'm definitely glad I did that. That was a, It was a pretty different ending. I mean, the bomb still went off. And they both still got radiation poisoning, but a lot was different. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, some uh, good news. Good news, everyone! <laughs> um, between the time I did episode 1 and 2 and... Episode 1 and 2. No, wait, it's three episodes, right? How many episodes did I break this into? Three. Okay, yeah. So between episode 3, which was the end of my first playthrough, and this episode, which is episode 4, um, this game actually got greenlit. I, I mentioned at the end of it, uh, to go support it on a green light, um, if you haven't. But it turns out there's actually no need to. In the couple days in between playing it originally and playing it now, it actually got freaking greenlit, which is awesome. I mean, what a coincidence and what a great thing. So I'm I'm really 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 happy that this great game is going to be brought to a bigger audience, 
because it really is going to reach such a bigger audience when it's on Steam. Yeah, it, yeah, it's going to be really good for the game. So yeah, hopefully that gives the game and Dischan, the group uh, behind the game, some more uh, some more attention. Get them into the spotlight a bit because they definitely deserve it. I want to see more from them, and I hope they I hope they have success because they deserve success. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure there are no more endings to the game. So this is probably the last you'll see of me for Dysfunctional Systems until the next episode comes out. Which is probably going to be in quite a bit. Probably half a year or more. There's no definite release date for the second episode, so... We're just gonna have to impatiently wait. And god, I can't wait. I mean, I can. Obviously, I have to wait. For I am not able to stop time from passing. Or speed it up. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited for the next episode. And I hope you have enjoyed so far. Dysfunctional Systems is a damn good game. Damn good. Alright, that's it. Goodbye.